we have the choir come up, please? Everyone help us sing.
a desire to want to serve you and to live for you. But we, we love you. We thank you for all you do. We're thankful for the great uh, victories that we saw in camp this week, the decisions that were made uh, from our children, from our teenagers. And we pray now, Lord, that you would continue uh, to help them to grow in their faith and to have victory over sin and just to give their lives completely in, uh, to you. We love you. We thank you. It's in the precious name of Jesus we pray. And amen. Number 56. If you will, stand with us, please, and take your hymn book, and let's sing number 56. 56, if you're in your hymn book. <laughs>
Amen. Well, you can be seated this morning. We do want to welcome you to Tri-State Baptist Temple. We're excited about the day. Uh, this is Camp Sunday. We're going to share some things in just a little while about some of the things that happened at church camp. We're going to sing some of our camp songs that we learned throughout the week, and uh, we're excited about that. I do want to take just a moment to uh, make a few announcements this morning and remind you about some, th uh, some of the things that are going on in the life of our church. Our just over youth group, our joy group, we're going to have a trip on the 18th. That's Thursday. We want to remind you about that. Don't forget that that date is different than the calendar. If you're looking at your calendar, that says Tuesday. We had to make a change on that. Uh, so if you're part of our joy group, make sure you mark that down. That will be on Thursday this week at 8 o'clock. You can go to the Four Mile Armish Markets, and uh, that'll be a fun trip. So you want to make sure you're a part of that. Our lady, next ladies' meeting uh, is also on Thursday at 6.30. Uh, so that evening, our next ladies' meeting, Growing in God's Purpose ladies' meeting, uh, will be on Thursday evening. Again, that was another change in the calendar, so you want to make sure you uh, realize that is this week, this coming Thursday. We want all of our ladies that are here, teenagers as well, to come and be a part of that, spend some time in God's Word together, and uh, that is on uh, this coming Thursday. And now that church camp has concluded, it's time to pray for Bible school. And so next month, uh, Vacation Bible School will be here, and that will be here before we know it. And I hope you'll be praying for that. July the 20th uh, through the 24th are, are, is the week of Vacation Bible School. The theme is to the edge, and there'll be space uh, things. Uh, uh, there'll be you know, astronauts and planets and all those kind of things. And then God's word will be the center of all that we do. And uh, so we'll be teaching uh, Bible lessons. And we're looking forward to having a vacation Bible school uh, in July. So lots of things that are going on today and lots of things to be praying for. But in just a little bit, we'll have all of our campers come up and share some songs and uh, testimonies and those kind of things. At this time, though, we would like our men to come. We'll take up our tithes, offering faith promise missions offering this morning. Amen. Let's pray together this morning. Heavenly Father, so thankful for the opportunity to be here with you. Please bless our pastor this morning as he brings the message that God has laid on his heart. Father, so thankful for this talk on the week or the church camp, how our church grew together in real truth and new ways. And we pray, Heavenly Father, bless this offering. Amen. Amen, amen. Well, this time we are going to go ahead and invite all of our campers uh, to come uh, on up to the uh, platform here. We're going to get our, our senior campers to be in the back two rows, and our junior campers are going to come right here to the front. Hope all of our camp uh, workers, our staff, will come and help us as well. And uh, we are uh, just excited about what the Lord has done. And uh, this week uh, we're thankful for the professions of faith that were made through camp. Uh, we're thankful for uh, those that were making decisions to uh, serve the Lord and wanted to, uh, were, were, were convicted of sin in their lives and, and just uh, not being faithful and uh, wanted to deal with those things and, and please the Lord in those areas. We're thankful for that. 
Uh, we're thankful that there were many who uh, have a concern now for their parents and for uh, other family members who uh, don't know the Lord as Savior and have a real uh, burden and, and uh, a conviction about that as well and want to uh, just reach them. And so it was a great week of camp. We had about 80 campers at, w- at camp. And so we've got uh, not all of them here today. We've got a good amount of them. We had about 80 campers, and uh, it was a great week. And uh, we just uh, uh, are uh, excited about what the Lord has done. And so uh, we're going to try to sing a couple of uh, a few of the songs that we sang at camp, and uh, we'll share some testimonies and things as well. Uh, but it's been a great week at camp. And so uh, we'll go ahead and sing this first song, guys. Jesus paid it all. Amen. Well, I wonder if any of our junior campers might uh, have something that was their favorite part of camp. Somebody raise your hand. Nastasia, what was your favorite part of camp? Uh-oh. Huh? Yeah, it could be what song? Oh, Nastasia says her favorite song is the one that we're getting ready to sing. Yeah, very good. Does anybody else, any of our junior camp had a favorite part of camp? All right, Kaya? Oh, the skits at campfire. At campfire, we had uh, some skits that were funny. We had some guests each night would come and uh, do some fun things. Uh, Malia, what was your favorite part? The campfire was your favorite part, too? What about you, Cody? Crazy hour was Cody's favorite part. We certainly had some special guests at crazy hour. They sang some uh, fun songs, so that was a lot of fun. One more junior camp. Okay, let's see. Swimming. Swimming is always a favorite part of some of our junior campers. Very good. And they all had lots of different things. Uh, the one of their favorite songs was certainly this song. And I would imagine this was one of our junior camper songs, but I imagine a lot of our senior campers like this one as well. It's a lot of fun, but we'll go ahead and sing this one for you. Sing real loud, guys. Thank you. 
that was one of their favorite songs all week, and it was a lot of fun. And uh, is there two more songs? Sorry. All right, we'll sing one, another song here. And so let's sing this one out really loud, guys. All right. <laughs> I wonder if there are any of our teenagers, Leonard already, you don't even know what I'm going to ask. I'm going to ask for somebody to give a testimony of the week. You ready for that, Leonard? <laughs> Go ahead, tell me what your favorite thing was first. Tell me. The food, the food was Leonard's favorite thing. Good, good, very good. And uh, do any of our teenagers have a testimony, anything the Lord uh, did? Yes, Serena? Amen, amen, good. We had uh, many professions of faith this week, and we praise the Lord for that. Uh, praise the Lord, uh, wanting to share it too. Amen. Any, uh, any more teenagers or senior campers want to uh, have a word of testimony? Anything that uh, was stood out to you this week? Yes, Luke. Well, my, me and my sister got saved. Amen. 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 We're excited that Luke. Yeah, yeah. We're excited that Luke and his sister. <laughs> I started coming, and we're excited. They both accepted Christ at camp, and uh, Luke has been a lot of fun. He was a lot of fun in our in our cabin. Wasn't he? <laughs> Good. Any any more of our senior campers have any word of testimony? Anything you want to share? Sing it all. Yes. I have you. something I love about the camp. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I love the campfire. All good. Sebastian loves our campfire. Sebastian has been a blessing as well to be at camp each yeah. week. Yes, Holly. Hallelujah. You like to make a hallelujah. Um, I like how his mood on Saturday but he always goes down every night and has the worship. Amen. 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 We've been excited about uh, the, we had 20 girls in the senior cabin and we had 12 guys and we're excited about them. Uh, wanting to serve the Lord, and uh, I hope you'll pray for uh, the youth group each week and as we meet out on Wednesdays in uh, the uh, youth group. Uh, you know, last year at church camp, there's some that are in, uh, they're up here today that at last year at camp, the Lord got a hold of them, and uh, they just decided they're going to start serving the Lord and get serious about these things, and uh, we've seen them grow all throughout this year, and we've been excited to see that, the Lord working, and we're excited that uh, they're back here again right now. You know, at ch church camp, there are times when uh, people get excited, and then it'll wear off over time. You know how that is. That happens in the Christian life a lot, but we're excited that uh, last year, the Lord got a hold of some, and they haven't missed. They're still here. I've uh, been here the whole year. We're looking forward to seeing God continue to do that work in their lives and keep growing. And so we're excited. Pray for us. We've got to grow, and we've got to learn. And uh, it takes lessons sometimes. God's got to give us some lessons and teach us some things. But I'm uh, excited for them and proud of them and uh, uh, looking forward uh, to continuing to grow. Any other of our teenagers have, uh, have a testimony or anything you want to say at all? Yes. Crazy how was your favorite? Yes, it was good, wasn't it? Okay. I like I because I like the best, okay? So yes. you went but we went with the Ruby Day. 
you have to. You just have to ask him. Yes, our senior boys, we get toast every night. Brother Drew brings us toast every night. That was his favorite. Very good. Any other testimonies from our senior campers before we sing our last song? Senior camp, any more testimonies at all? Very good. I don't think they're always this shy. I don't know. Let's sing uh, our next song. This is the day. Let's sing this really loud. Guys. Sing it here. excited for a great week of camp. Uh, one of the things that makes camp a good week is that we have people from our church who are willing to uh, spend their time and come to camp and uh, use the talents that God have gi has given them to uh, just minister to the children and teenagers and uh, just serve the Lord. And I wonder if any of our counselors or our adult workers would have a word of testimony uh, before we finish here. Any at all? Any? Amen. Amen. Any other counselors or uh, staff at all? Oh, yes. yes. Uh, I was impressed with some of the boys in the, uh, some of the men at 20 Conservation here in Grossman and the folks who came from staff. Amen. 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 Yes, brother. Uh, this was my first year in the senior boys' cabin, and, you know, it's, it's good to see the bond being created. Um, you know, there weren't really any cliques. They all got a well, but they all got, got along and, you know, were well together. And uh, I spoke this week about good Christian friends. You know, I'm just, I'm encouraged to see how well they bonded together. And I told them, you know, the Christian walk, you know, it isn't always easy. So when you get back from camp, you know, you get around distractions and bad influences. These are guys that they can rely on for encouragement and, uh, and comfort. So I just hope they keep that in mind. Amen. Amen. Any other of our staff or our adults? I had the second and third grade girls for the first time. In the past, I've been with the teenagers, so it was good for me to see just how innocent and open that they are. I had one little girl, Petherton, was speaking on being left behind, and before he was even finished with the service, she turned around and said, I'm Pinky, and he went up and just shaked her hand. And I said, just you know, give me just a few minutes, but they're just exciting to have, and, and they were a lot of fun. And I also want to say that um, we had two ladies from Amen. 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 Any other uh, any other of our staff have a testimony at all? Anybody at all? Well, well also I enjoyed I enjoyed preaching from the uh, preaching from the area of the Bible college. Amen. I, I really think it added some perspective to camp. Amen. Amen. We were uh, blessed to have uh, four men, I think, and three, was it four and three 
uh, ladies from the uh, from Marietta, some of them already missionaries and uh, had come through that school, and uh, they were able just to preach the word uh, uh, of God to our our, counts, our campers, and uh, it was a blessing. It was a blessing to have their influence in the in the cabins and uh, during competition times and just everything that we did, having them around, and uh, they're always conscious about serving the Lord. And what a what a convicting uh, thing it is to watch. That's the way we need to be. And uh, we appreciated them, and uh, it's been uh, just such a good week. I hope you'll pray now diligently uh, for all these campers, that they'll uh, stay strong, continue to grow, and that uh, we can uh, see the Lord just continue to do a movement, uh, do a work uh, in their lives. Uh, if any, I'll give our counselors one last chance. Anybody at all? Amen. 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 Anybody else? I was impressed that the, the little ones come into the second grade. They didn't miss the home at all. <laughs> <laughs> now, so they, they, now, they were worn out first before everyone else. They, they hit the beds early, but um, it was a good um, experience. We had three Marriott Bible College students with us, and they really worked out good. The kids loved them. They had a special bond. And, and um, I'm also thankful for my um, the other counselor, um, uh, Matt Lee. He, he really knows how to touch the kids with uh, their word and their respect. And um, I'm so thankful for the, the whole bond of the whole church because we all had to work together. Amen. 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 Any more? Anybody else before we finish? Amen. Amen. Well, again, it's been a good week. I'm going to go ahead and let our uh, uh, campers head back off to the platform. And uh, we're thankful for a good week. Well, thank you. I appreciate all of our campers and volunteers that went to work at camp uh, coming and sharing a little bit about the camp, and it was a great, great week. We were really excited and thankful for how God worked in lives, and uh, it was a blessing. I appreciate folks praying, people who gave financially, people who brought in uh, supplies and different things so that we could take those things and go with us, and, and we did have a really, really good week and uh, one of the best weeks of camp. Uh, that I can remember. It's a, it was just a blessing. We did have, Evan mentioned, about 80 campers that went, and we had somewhere in the neighborhood about 25 adults. We did have those students from Marietta Bible College who were just eager to come and to be able to work, serve, and learn about how we do camps here in the States. And I know they were excited about take, taking some of those things back to the Philippines and using them and, and uh, kind of taking... Uh, our ministry and planning it a little further around the world. So we were excited to have them. They did a good job. And uh, I, I'm thankful for our, our church being able to and willing to and making the investment in church camp. It is truly one of the greatest opportunities we have all year to see God work in lives. And uh, we are thankful and blessed by that. Uh, I hope you'll pray for me uh, one week from today. Uh, Angie and I, and I'm taking Lydia and Evan with me, I'm going to do, we're going to go do a church camp for Brother Cecil Sturgill, Dr. Sturgill. I was on staff at Tabernacle Baptist Church back in the late 90s, 
and uh, started church camp for him there. They had never had it before. And uh, the church is going through some transitions and different things, and they uh, want to have camp, but they just really don't have everyone they need to to make that happen. And he called me and asked me if I'd pray about coming and doing it for him, and so we're going to go do another week of camp, and that'll start a week from tomorrow. But I, I, know, uh, I know this, that I won't have as great a help as we had this week. Uh, everybody that went to volunteer at camp, you did a tremendous job. Everybody did a great, great job with who you were working with and what we asked you to do, and, and uh, just a blessing. I, I really appreciate it. God was able to accomplish a lot because you were willing to be used of God in whatever way that you were called upon to be used of Him. So we had a great week, and uh, it was a blessing. I uh, appreciated all those junior campers. Boy, there were a bunch of them, and and uh, they, they, this was the least homesick crowd we ever had, wasn't it? I, don't, I mean, none of them wanted to go home. It was, uh, you know, we don't want to leave. We want to live here. You know, I wish, I wish it was next year already. And, and one little girl, uh, I wish school went by as fast as church camp. That's what she said. <laughs> so she's smart, you know. She's got that figured out. But it, it was great. You know, some, some years you get them little whiny kids. Man, they want to go home the first day and... And, uh, and that's, that's trying on your adults. Uh, but this year, I don't think any of us had to fight any of that. So that was a good thing. And uh, I appreciated all of our junior campers. And those little ones, they really can pack away the food. They can pack it away. I appreciated uh, Kathy Mitchell. And uh, we didn't do her in. That's not why she's not here today. <laughs> We didn't run her in the ground, that's not why she's not here, but Kathy and Elaine, Melvin and Angie did a great job, and Anna working in the kitchen for us, and uh, I know Vaughn helped today, Kathy came out, and, and Rachel helped today, and so we had, uh, had great folks working in the kitchen for us, and uh, then we had a wonderful group of teenagers. Evan mentioned we had 20 teenage girls, can you imagine that, and, uh, and then we had 12 boys, young men, and uh, I, I'm proud of our young people here at our church. And you just look at them. They look nice, don't they? And, uh, and uh, they, they want to be here. And I have, I have the greatest hope of the potential of what God will do in the lives of these young people. And I hold them to a high standard. I, I expect a lot out of them. And sometimes maybe I may show a little bit of disappointment in them because I know what they're capable of. But we have a great group of young people, and uh, I'm thankful for them. And uh, I'm thankful for our camp, these songs here. We didn't have rock and roll and rap music at church camp. We had good Christ-honoring music, and these young people like it. Listen, they like it, and they know it's it's something that honors the Lord, and they sing, and they appreciate it, and they enjoy it. And so we just had a great week. I'm thankful for it. I know we had at least 12 decisions for salvation. And I think there's more because I don't have all the decision cards in. Folks, I need to get them in. If you don't have them in, turn them in to me. And then I know we had at least that many more. Uh, folks who just wanted to speak to a counselor. Maybe it might have been about victory over sin. It might have been about assurance of their salvation uh, or some other thing. And then I think it was Thursday night, one of the most unusual services that we'd ever had. It was hot. The air conditioner didn't work in the chapel. That was from day number one. And it was really, really hot upstairs in that old barn. That's where you have chapel, in, upstairs of an old barn. And, uh, I mean, we'd been in there a long time, and uh, you get up to preach, and you just see, you know, people slumping down in the seats, and their eyelids are snapping shut, and they're tired, and they're hot. But I tell you, God did an unusual thing. The Holy Spirit just descended on that group of people, and from the front to the back, littlest to the smallest, He just arrested their attention. And uh, just right, right away, you could tell God was speaking to hearts. And uh, a spirit of concern about loved ones touched the hearts and lives of so many campers. 
young boys and girls and teenagers realize, you know what, if my mother died today, if my father died today, if my brothers or my sisters died today, they're lost. They're not ready to meet Jesus Christ. And they had a burden for that. They had a concern for that. And, uh, you know, I, I'm praying for these teenagers because many of our teenagers and children went home excited about camp and excited about the things of God, excited about the Word of God, and when they began to share that, they just hit a brick wall in their house because they don't have parents that go to church or know God or the Word of God isn't appreciated in that home and whatever the case may be. We need to pray for them that God will encourage them that they'll not be, uh, not be swept away by the devil uh, just throwing out the, the fire. But like some of these young people got on fire for God last year at camp. The fire has not went out. They're still serving God. There's some of you now, you're here today. Now one year from now, you need to be right where you are. Don't quit. Don't let up no matter what happens. No matter if mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, or anybody else ever gets excited or gets on board, you serve Jesus Christ faithfully. And God will use your faithful consistency to make a difference in the life of your parents. It may take a year of living for God to get your parents' attention. To see that God really did a change in your life that they can't explain. They can't explain it. It has to be God. And so they'll begin to listen. But you've got to be consistent and be faithful. So pray for them. Uh, I'm excited for them. It, it's a blessing. And, uh, and so it was a great week. Great week. Fantastic. And God blessed in so many ways. We could talk about it all day. There are some pictures that will run after the service and before the service and after tonight. So you can see some of those pictures and enjoy the pictures that, that we have. So uh, we're thankful that the, the students from Marietta, some of those are graduates and they already have planted churches and started some churches. You met a few Sunday night, and then others came in on, uh, on Monday. Tremendous job, did a wonderful job, great servants of the Lord. And they were already wanting to know, can we come next year? Can we be a part next year? So, so that was a blessing. Well, let's take the Bible today that God has given us, and let's open it to the Old Testament book of Proverbs. And I just want to read one verse today, Proverbs 24, verse number 3. And uh, I want to preach this morning on this subject, the Holy Spirit's place in your family. And I want us to grow in wisdom. Proverbs is the book of wisdom. Wisdom is God, God giving us the ability to make right choices. Choices that, number one, please God. Number two, are the best for our family. That's wisdom. And uh, God gives wisdom. And we find wisdom through the Word of God. And as I preach this morning, some of what I'm going to say is probably going to sound a lot like what we wrote for you in the men's book that I gave out at the breakfast yesterday. Had this on my mind, been working, I, I, I wrote that book and put the booklet together that I gave out yesterday at the men's breakfast last week at camp. And so these things just kind of all work together and God gave me this message for you to, this morning. But... Uh, uh, by the way, thank you for a great men's breakfast. We had almost 20 out again for the men's breakfast yesterday, and uh, I appreciate that, and the next one will be in July. But Proverbs 24, verse 3, the Holy Spirit's place in your family. And no matter who you are today, you may be a teenager or you may be a grandparent, you may live in a house where it's hard to find a place to sit down, or you may be the only one there, but uh, the Holy Spirit has a place in our homes and families. And I want you to look at that with me today. Verse 3, Proverbs 24. Through wisdom is a house builded, and by understanding it is established. By or through wisdom is a house builded, and by understanding it is established. So let's look at God's Word today. We want to grow in our wisdom and we want to learn about the Holy Spirit of God's place in our life and family. Father, we thank you again for a great week at camp. We are rejoicing today at your goodness. Thank you, God, for the good spirit that was there by all the workers, the campers. Thank you for the good weather. It rained a little bit Monday, but it was good dry weather the rest of the week. Thank you for the good food. 
Lord, thank you for all the facilities we had. And though, God, it was hot in the church services, it was cool where we slept. And God, every time we gathered together in that church building there to have church and it was hot and sweaty, Lord, I thought about those young men and women from the Philippines and from New Guinea who God would never have a church camp as nice as that one. And God, every church service, they would, they would deal with the same thing, the heat and the sweat and the humidity. And yet, God, faithfully, they're going to serve you and live for you. And so, Lord, what a blessing we have to be here in this service today, in this building with the air conditioning. And God, we don't have anything to complain about. Help us be faithful people to the house of God. Help us to be here every time the doors are open to worship you and serve you and to learn and grow. And God, be better equipped to live for you and bring you glory. Lord, we just ask today now that you will touch your word. Our confidence is not in our flesh, but God, we've seen the power of the Holy Spirit and the Word of God, and Lord, we are trusting in those things today. Do your work in every heart and life. Someone who's come to church today lost, may they be saved today. If there's a camper that went to camp and God just uh, every single day uh, heard your Word and yet never responded to you, we pray they will today. And uh, Lord, we just ask you this morning to do what you need know needs done in each of our hearts and lives. Give us wisdom. Help us to know the truth about the Holy Spirit and how much we need Him in our families and in our lives. And we ask these things this morning in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You know, you find the wisdom of an all-knowing God in the Word of God. We find wisdom, the wisdom of God. We have it in our Bibles. And God has given us, in His Word, the blueprints for our lives. Uh, Our lives, whoever you may be, and whatever role you may find yourself in right now in life, God gives you the blueprint for how you can be uh, honoring unto God and how you can bring glory to God, uh, how that role in your life uh, can be everything God desires it to be. Uh, God wants us to use His Word as the blueprint in building our homes and our families. We can see strong, godly families built uh, when God's Word is faithfully obeyed. You know, today many relationships and families are being uh, tested by trials. And we know that unfortunately many are crumbling and falling apart. Because of the pressures of the world, the world to to press in on our homes and families and conform them to the world, homes are crumbling, families are being disintegrated. Because of the pride of our flesh, we know that when, when, when people in a home live for self through pride instead of the Savior and surrender and submitting to one another, that homes can become a battlefield. And many are being destroyed and pulled apart today because of the pride of the flesh, because of the pressures of the world, because of the pitfalls and snares of the devil. Uh, It's hard enough uh, without uh, the, the, the devil, our adversary, continually, unrelentingly looking for ways to destroy your home and your family and your lives. And yet we're facing them all today. But through the Word of God, through the wisdom of God's Word, through following the blueprints of the Bible, uh, strong godly families can be built. And, uh, and they can be established when God's Word is faithfully obeyed. God has given to your family and to your, and to your life today uh, everything you need to build a strong life. To have a strong, godly family that cannot be torn apart, that will not be destroyed. God has given you everything you need for that. And I hope today, again, no matter what age you are, whether you're a teenager and you don't have a a, a family, you haven't established your own home, a husband, a wife, and kids down the road. Listen, God has given you everything you need to make that happen through His Word. Listen to what God says in 2 Peter chapter 1, beginning in verse 2. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord, according as His divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of Him that hath called us to glory and virtue. 
God says today that there is grace and peace and it is multiplied. It is abundant when you fill your heart and life with the knowledge of God and Jesus Christ. You want peace? You want to have uh, and know the grace of God? Then learn and know Jesus Christ as your Savior. And then he said, in Christ and through the knowledge of Jesus Christ in your life, you have everything you need that pertains to life and godliness. You want to know how to live a life that is the life God wants you to have. Do you want to know how to have a godly, God-honoring life? Then all of those things are in Jesus Christ. Verse 4 there said, "...whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust." All that we uh, need, we can find in the Word of God. Every, uh, everything you need for a godly life and a godly home is in the Word of God. You need wisdom, God gives wisdom. He says, ask me for it, I'll give it to you, I'll give it liberally. He said, you need guidance, uh, my Word is a lamp under your feet, a light under your path. You need truth, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You need light, He's the light of the world to light your life. You need strength, uh, even though you're weak, you'll find strength when you rely on Jesus Christ. Courage, uh, faith. You need faith. You say, Pastor, I just want to believe in Christ. I want to live a faithful life. I want to overcome the circumstances and situations of life. I don't want to live the roller coaster life of my feelings, but I want to live by faith. The Bible said faith comes by hearing and hearing comes by the Word of God. Everything you need in life, you're going to find it in the Word of God. God wants you to have faith in Him. He wants you to have a faith in Him that will build your life and family as you apply and obey His Word. Let me give you three simple truths today about the Holy Spirit's place in your family and in your life. Number one is simply that, that the Holy Spirit has a place in your family. There's a place for Him in your family. We need the Holy Spirit in our life and family. And the Bible teaches us that you will have And you can have the presence of God, Jesus Christ's presence in your family through the Holy Spirit. You have Christ in your family through the Holy Spirit. God in your family through the person of the Holy Spirit. And this begins the very moment that you become born again and saved. The moment you become a born-again believer, the moment you become saved, uh, you have the Holy Spirit's presence in your life. Jesus Christ talked to a man about this in John chapter 3, beginning in verse 6. The Bible says, "...that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit." Jesus told this man that night, "...marvel not that I say unto ye, ye must be born again." Born again. Jesus said you need to be born again. Now, I spent some time the other night, Thursday night, I think, talking to the children about being born again. And I said, I don't want anybody to misunderstand what we mean by that. Born, being born again, being saved. These are Bible terms. And uh, they can mean maybe different things to different people if they've never seen scripturally what they truly mean. So today, I want you to know and understand what it means to be born again. Uh, We're telling you today, if you you want to know God and know Jesus Christ and have the Holy Spirit, you have to be born again. Uh, The Bible talks about being born again, being scripturally saved. I told the young people the other night that when the Bible talks about being born again, when the Bible talks about being saved, it's not asking you uh, what denomination of church you go to. It's not asking you whether you're a Baptist, a Methodist, a Presbyterian, a Catholic, or a Nazarene. Uh, You can be uh, or affiliated or associate yourself with any number of denominations in the world, and that does not mean you are a born-again believer. That does not mean you've been saved. Uh, It doesn't mean tonight being born again, being saved, doesn't mean uh, what kind of church you go to. We're a traditional Bible preaching, Bible teaching church. We don't make apologies for that. We believe we're fulfilling the scriptural model for that in the New Testament. Uh, But that doesn't mean just because you go to this church that you're a born again believer. It doesn't mean that just because you come to this church you're saved, by the way. It doesn't mean because you choose to go to one of the new uh, versions of church, one of the contemporary churches, that you're a born again believer because you choose to go there. 
It doesn't mean today that you're born again simply because you go to a big church or a little church. There are some people today that say, Pastor, I'm a little church person. I don't like to go to those big crowds where all the big people are. Uh, and other people say, well, it's just too slow for me around the little church. I want to go to the big church. But it doesn't matter if you're a big church or little church. It, it doesn't mean you've been born again by the grace of God or saved, depending on the size of your church. I told to tell the young people, you know, it doesn't matter uh, if the church where you go to, if the emphasis is on the preaching of God's Word, which it is here, that's what we emphasize. Or whether you go to some type of ministry where the emphasis is on the praise band and wrong rock and roll, uh, neither of those alone are going to be insur insurance that you are a born again believer. Uh, born again, uh, being a born again believer means that by the grace of God and through the divine work of the Holy Spirit, you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ alone as your personal Savior. Uh, there's nothing else today that makes someone born again. No one, nothing else saves a soul from hell except personal faith in Jesus Christ alone as your Savior. Uh, God doesn't, uh, it doesn't matter to God whether you're religious or not, whether you take communion every week, whether you go to confession, whether you're confirmed, or whether you memorize the a catechism. What matters is whether you've been born again. Whether you have been born again by the Spirit of God. Acts chapter 20 verse 21, Paul was preaching and he said, testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. And now, behold, Paul said, I go bound in the Spirit unto Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me there. But Paul said, listen, uh, in this idea of being born again, there's going to be repentance toward God and faith in Jesus Christ. These two things are, 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 are two sides of the same coin, so to speak. You'll not have true faith in Jesus Christ unless you have repented toward God. And when you have true repentance toward God, you'll have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so those together mean a man is born again. Everyone that is, everyone that is, and this is probably not good grammar or language, but everyone that is right now has been born of the flesh. Jesus said that which is born of the flesh is flesh. He told that man that night when that man came wanting to know about how to go to heaven. He said that which is born of the flesh is of the flesh. All of us have been born of the flesh. But Jesus said, ye must be born again. Ye must be born of the Spirit of God. And today, that's what everyone needs, is to be born again by the Spirit of God through faith in Jesus Christ. And when you are born again, the Holy Spirit of God comes to live in you. He comes immediately the moment that you're born again. He comes and indwells your life, the presence of Jesus Christ, by His Spirit. 1 Peter 1, again there, he says, "...whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature." When I believe the precious promises of the gospel that God loved me, Jesus died for me, uh, He uh, rose again from the dead, and that I could be saved if I would call on Him and ask Him to forgive me. When I believe the precious promises by grace through faith, I was born again. I became a divine partaker of the nature of God. I have Christ living in me, and now I am in Him. And that's because I've been born again by grace through faith, by the Word of God, by the work of the Holy Spirit, a partaker of the life of God Himself, eternal life. Romans 10 uh, verse uh, number 17 said, Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. John 6.63 6, said, It is the Spirit that quickeneth. The word quickeneth meaning make alive spiritually. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. And verse 64 says, But there are some of you that believe not. And that's true, isn't it? There are some people tonight or today right here, possibly in this service, who do not and have not been born again. You have not believed in Jesus Christ as the Savior paying for your sin debt and you have not been born again. But when you are, you're saved by the grace of God. Your sin debt's forgiven. Uh, you become justified by faith in Jesus Christ. Uh, you are given the righteousness of Christ as a free gift. 
You are sealed by the Spirit of God and you are indwelt by the Holy Spirit of God. He comes to live in your life. Now listen, I said all of that to help you understand the Holy Spirit has a big place that is needed in our life and family. We need Him. Jesus Christ knew we would need Him. He said, it's expedient for you that I go away. Because if I don't go away, the Spirit of God isn't going to come. And you need Him. We need Him in our life. We need Him in our families. He is necessary for any successful relationship. I want you to think about how amazing uh, God's plan for the family is. Back in the book of Genesis, God created a man. He made him out of the dust of the earth, formed him up, and, uh, and breathed into him the breath of life. Man became a living soul. Uh, then God said it's not good for him to be alone, and uh, He created for man uh, a bass boat. No, no, that wasn't it. Uh, he, he created for man uh, a hunting dog. No, that wasn't it either. He created for man a woman. He said a man needs a woman. But uh, I talked to our men yesterday at our men's breakfast. And by the way, men, what I say in the men's breakfast should always stay in the men's breakfast. All right? But you cannot think of two things God made more different than a man and a woman. I mean, they don't even think the same. They don't think the same things about things. I mean, a man knows that the way you brush your teeth is you grab the toothpaste and you squeeze that thing right in the middle until it all comes out on the brush. I don't know why women think they have to fold it up so neatly from the end and push it up all the way to the top. Where do they get that, you know? Uh, I mean, men and women don't think about anything the same, and yet God said it's not good for the man to be without a companion, a helpmate, so He made him a woman. But there is no possible way a man and a woman could join together in a relationship and sincerely believe that it will endure. And so God gives us the Holy Spirit. He gives man and a woman the Holy Spirit. When they're born again and saved by the grace of God, uh, you know, uh, we see the world differently. Uh, We see the home differently. We see parenting children differently. Uh, We see priorities differently. We see everything differently. But I tell you what, when both a man and a woman are born again by the grace of God, when they are indwelt by the Holy Spirit, they have the same person living inside of them. The same person, the Holy Spirit lives in me. The same person, the Holy Spirit lives in my wife. And no matter what differences we have in the flesh, when we surrender to the Holy Spirit, when we yield our lives to the Holy Spirit, when we, uh, when we surrender to be guided by the Holy Spirit, then my heart and my wife's heart and our lives are going to be moving in the same direction. Uh, they're going to be going the same way. That's God's way and that's the work of the Holy Spirit. And that's why we need Him so desperately. I told the men yesterday, whenever a couple approaches me about being married, I'll never marry them unless they agree to meet with me three times and let me have counseling. And you'd be amazed at how many times that that's enough. That's all. They won't even be willing to do that. But I'll take the Bible and put it between the the woman and the man on the very first meeting and I'll tell them this is the only chance your marriage has of surviving. Is if you will agree to surrender your life and submit to the authority of the Scriptures and you do the same. So that when you get into this relationship, it's not my way or your way, it's God's way. Because your way is going to be different about some things and your way is going to be different about some things, but God's way, that's the way. And if you'll both agree to that, it'll work. It will work, and it will grow, and it will build, and it will be stronger. And why is that possible? Because of the Holy Spirit's place in your home and family. Because of the Holy Spirit's place. You know, it will never be the things of the world from without that strengthen our families. It will never be the things from without that build godly lives and homes Uh, It will never be the things that the world has on the outside that will bind our lives and relationships together, that will hold them together and will strengthen them. It will always be the things of God, the Word of God, and the Holy Spirit's presence from within. That's what's going to do the work. Always. All the power of God is available to everyone who is and has the Holy Spirit's presence. 
who has this presence of the Holy Spirit, all the power of God is available to them. And, and, and they, they surrender their lives to His leadership uh, and, and yield their lives to the Holy Spirit. Then they have all the power of God in their homes and in their lives. And the Holy Spirit has a place in our life and family. We need Him. But secondly, the Holy Spirit's purpose. What is the Holy Spirit's purpose in your life and family? John chapter 16, Jesus is talking to the disciples and He says, How be it when He, the Spirit of truth, is come, He will guide you into all truth. For He shall not speak of Himself, but whatsoever He shall hear, that shall He speak. And He will show you things to come. He shall glorify Me, for He shall receive of Mine and shall show it unto you. Now, the Holy Spirit has a place that we desperately need in our home and family. We need Him in our life. We need to be born again. And then we have Him, and we have Him in our home and family. But the Holy Spirit has a purpose in our life and family. You know, God so loved men and women, boys and girls. He so loved the world that He gave us His Son, Jesus Christ. His perfect, sinless Son, the Son of God. He gave Him to us, and He came willingly, willingly, with a heart to become the sacrifice to pay your sin debt. He paid your sin debt today. The sin debt you owe a holy God. Jesus Christ paid that debt. He went to the cross. He died to pay your sins. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, was buried to take your sins away. And then He rose again the third day and gave us victory over the grave, over death, over over hell, over sin, over Satan. And when Jesus Christ ascended back to God the Father 40 days after He rose from the grave, He sent back the Holy Spirit. He sent the Comforter back. The Spirit of God. uh, Jesus Christ's own presence into the life of every born again believer. He lives now in the life of every born again believer. And the Holy Spirit has a lot of purposes in the world. He's doing a lot of things in the world, convicting and convincing the lost world of sin and righteousness and of judgment. Uh, and he's among, uh, he's in the world uh, doing that work. But in our lives, many purposes, but among them, chief among them, is that He enables you and I to understand the Word of God and to find and know the will of God. The Holy Spirit enables us to do that. And that's very important. Because God wants each of you today to know His will for your life. God has a plan for your life. Young people, listen, God has a plan for your life. Don't go through life and never ask Him to show you. Don't go through life and never give Him thought toward it. Don't go through life and never even consult the One who created and planned you because it is the perfect will for your life. Uh, Romans chapter 12, uh, he talks about that in verses 1 and 2, that the will of God is good, acceptable, and perfect. And no matter what language uh, you understand, the word perfect means perfect. You can't get better than that. God wants you to know His will. He has revealed it to you through His Word. And when you know His will, and with the Word of God, Uh, And when you choose to live by faith in Him, then you're going to have wisdom for your family and home. You're going to be making decisions and choices for you and your family that please God and are the best for you. And that's, that's because the Holy Spirit enables us to be able to do that. Without the Holy Spirit of God, uh, we would not be able to know that. We wouldn't be able to understand these things. And you know what? I want you to know today, you don't have to be a preacher, a teacher at Sunday school, a a missionary, or an evangelist to know what God is saying uh, in His Word or to know the will of God for your life. You don't have to be in Christian ministry to know what the Word of God says and know the will of God. God wants you all to know that. Every born-again believer, He wants you to know. Uh, He wants moms to know what is God's will for me as a mom. What is God's will in raising my family and my children for the glory of God? And how do I do it? Uh, I have it in the Word of God. God has that for you. 
God has it for dads. You don't have to try to figure it out. You don't have to wonder what kind of dad should I be. God gives you the will of God for fathers, the role of a father in the life of your children's lives. He gives it to you in the Word of God. You can find it. You can know it. You can understand it. He wants that to be true for all parents, for husbands with their wives and wives with their husbands, for children in relating to their parents. We can know that this is the will of God and we can know the way of God through the Word of God and it will be the Holy Spirit within you that teaches you and leads you and guides you. So the Holy Spirit has a very important place in our families, in our life. He has a purpose of helping us know the will of God and understand the Word of God and the way of God. He'll lead and guide you. He shows you from the Word what's God's will and the way of God to fulfill God's role for your life. The Holy Spirit equips you uh, to make wise choices, to make right decisions. Uh, Those that both please God, those are the best for God and for you as well. But listen, the lost and the world do not have that capability. The lost and the world cannot take the Word of God and understand it. They cannot discern all the will of God for their life because they do not have the Holy Spirit. Because they do not have Him. And if we'll surrender our will and life to God today by allowing the Holy Spirit to lead and guide our lives, if we'll allow Him to have control of our homes and families by living faithfully in obedience to God's Word, then we're going to find what a great purpose the Holy Spirit has, and that's to build and strengthen our lives, our homes, and our families. The Holy Spirit has a place in your life. He, he enters that place by being born again. The Holy Spirit has a divine purpose. He helps us take the Word and know the Word and will of God and the way of God, and that makes us, enables us to make wise choices, which are the best choices for our life and family. But one third thing, the product of the Holy Spirit in your life. What will the Holy Spirit's presence, when He fulfills His purpose, what will that produce in our families? What will it produce? John 16, verse 14. I read to you the preceding verses, but the 14th verse, Jesus said of the Holy Spirit, He will glorify Me. He will glorify Me. The Holy Spirit within our lives and families makes it possible that we can glorify God and Jesus Christ who are worthy of glory. They're worthy. Listen, life in this world can be challenging. It can be difficult. It can be tough. It can be, there can be circumstances and experiences of life that we don't enjoy going through. But by the goodness of God, by the grace of God, through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, we can know Him as our personal Savior. We can be born again. Our sin debt can be forgiven. And we will never have to spend one moment in the lake of fire in torment ever. The condemnation of God has been removed from our lives by the grace of God through faith in Jesus Christ. And our families can know Him our children and our grandchildren, we can live and die knowing they're safe, saved, and on their way to heaven too. And all the rest of that stuff, you know what? It's all just going to be washed away one day. It's going to all be gone. And we're going to be in eternity with Christ. Christ is worthy of glory. God is worthy of glory because they've been good to us. They've been gracious to us. And we should glorify Him. Galatians chapter 5, the Bible says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. The Bible said against such there is no law. There is no law against those things. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts, If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vainglory, provoking one another, envying one another. 
You know, when, when those in a home have the Holy Spirit, they've been born again. Christ came to live in them. He indwelt them the moment they were saved. And when those who have the Holy Spirit are allowing the Holy Spirit to lead and guide them, the nature and characteristics of God, everything that makes God and Jesus Christ good will be produced in the lives of those in that home and family who have the Holy Spirit and who are yielded to the Holy Spirit. They're going to produce those fruits. How'd you like your home to be filled with unconditional love, joy, peace, gentleness, long-suffering, meekness, and temperance? But see, because see, that's God's plan. That's God's will for your home and family. That's what God wants for your home and family. You say, Pastor, it's impossible. No, no, it isn't. See, it's possible because of the Holy Spirit. Because you can have Him, Christ in you, when you're born again and saved. You can't have it without Him. You can't have the Holy Spirit without being born again. But with with salvation, with being born again, you can have the Holy Spirit. And then when you yield to the Holy Spirit, He'll help you to understand the will of God. He'll help you understand the Word of God. He will lead you into wisdom and wise choices, choosing the way of God. And then you can begin to see what the Holy Spirit will produce. Love and joy and peace and gentleness and meekness. Our homes are supposed to be a little bit of heaven on earth. That's what God wants them to be. And that's possible because the Holy Spirit will produce that. I can't produce that in my flesh. My flesh can't do it. The world can't do it. But the Holy Spirit can do it. When those in a home have the Holy Spirit, and when they're allowing the Spirit to lead and guide them, then we have those good things of God in our homes. They don't come from without. They come from within by the Holy Spirit in our lives. Listen, the good things of God, those things that make our homes and families that little bit of heaven on earth, you can't find it at Walmart. You can't get it there. You can't find it, you parents, on a little league ball field. And sometimes we spend more time at Walmart and on the ball fields than we do where we ought to be. Serving God in our local church and learning by the Word of God how to let the Holy Spirit lead and guide our lives and see the produce of the Spirit-filled life become a reality in our homes. can't find it in the workplace. You can't find it in any school. It doesn't come. These things won't come just simply because you fill up some space on a pew a couple hours on a Sunday morning. It doesn't come from that. It will not come because you're a part of the praise team or the praise team can't work it up wherever you go to church when you don't go to church here. The only way these things can be realized in our homes and families is by the Holy Spirit's presence and by allowing Him to be in control of our life and by allowing Him to lead and guide us. See, He said it in Galatians 5 verse 16 this way, This I say then, walk in the Spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Walk in the Spirit. He said you have the Spirit, you have Him. Now walk in Him. Walk in the Spirit of God. Uh, See, the Holy Spirit gives us victory over our flesh. And I've already read to you today where the Bible said that in our flesh dwelleth zero, no good thing. No good thing. You know, the only thing our flesh has and that it produces is pride. Pride, which is selfishness. Which means our flesh, unchecked and let loose, all it wants to do is provide for itself. To to, to do what it wants to get what, it, what, it, what its way is, to please itself. That's the only thing the flesh can do. Selfishness, this is what the flesh produces. Worldliness, covetousness, this is the way the flesh walks. That's not the way the Spirit of God walks. That's the way your flesh walks. But walk in the Spirit of God 
who lives in you. Ephesians 5.18 says, And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Say, Pastor, why does God use liquor and alcohol uh, in this illustration? Because, because it's a negative, and we can sometimes learn from the negatives. Sometimes we have to learn from the negative. And the positive thing is, is that we are to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, all of you have probably seen someone under the control of alcohol or drugs. Under its control, they are not the people they normally are. They are not the people. They don't, they don't talk like they did before. They don't act like they did without being under the influence of it. They don't even walk like they do without being under the influence of alcohol or drugs. But please help God to help you understand that to flip that around means that if we will place our life under the influence of the Holy Spirit that lives within us, we are capable of things in the Holy Spirit we are not capable of in the flesh. But they are positive things. They are things that are the fruits of the Spirit. They are the things of, of, of living a selfless life, of loving unconditionally, of serving others, of submitting our life to God, of producing love and joy and peace and gentleness and long suffering and meekness and temperance. We can, we can see that become a reality through the presence of the Holy Spirit as He leads and guides us in the Word. And as we yield our life over to Him, we can see those things produced in our life. Surrender your life to the Holy Spirit's control and the will and word of God. And Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ did that for you. He did that for me. In Luke chapter 22 and verse 40, the Bible said, And when he was at the place, he said unto them, Pray that ye enter not in temptation. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast and kneeled down and prayed, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will be be done, but thine be done. And this, 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 is the, this is the way that we as God's people turn the Holy Spirit of God loose to have control of our life. When we're willing to do what Jesus Christ did, when we surrender our will to the will of God, and when we surrender our words to the Word of God, our uh, choices to the wisdom of God, the Holy Spirit's leadership, the control of the Holy Spirit. We, if we try to keep control of all those things, we're going to fail. Our relationships will fail. Our parenting will fail. Our homes will fail because the flesh profits nothing. And the way and walk of the flesh is the walk of worldliness, selfishness, and covetousness and destruction. And that's what we'll have. So we have a choice to make. We have a choice to make. Galatians 6 verse 7 says, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall the Spirit reap life everlasting. You have a choice today to make. And you young people need to begin to make it now. And don't wait till you're later on in life. Because you've got a lot of sowing and reaping to do before maybe you have a home established. But do it now. Make the choice. You're either going to sow of the flesh and reap back of the flesh, or you're going to sow the Spirit of God and reap back of the Spirit of God. And I don't know about you, but I would much rather reap back love and joy and peace and gentleness and long-suffering and goodness and meekness and unconditional love and selfless love and self-service and serving others than I would all the works of the flesh. And through the work of the Holy Spirit in our life, through the Word of God, through the place He has, we can give ourselves to the work of God. Listen, I, I want to encourage you today, begin to sow into your life the seeds that will grow your faith and will allow the Holy Spirit to accomplish His purpose. I want to encourage you young people and everyone here today, begin to sow into your life faithful church attendance. Don't, don't miss. Don't, don't hit or miss. We got a group of teenagers that we are allowing them uh, to be a part of a, another group that we're calling the Purpose Teens. And so far all they've done was fill out a paper telling us why they wanted to be a part of that group. 
But I can promise you this, and they're the group that we're targeting to go with us next summer on that mission trip, those purpose teens. But I, I want you all to know, for me, just because you fill out a paper doesn't mean anything. It's going to be the faithfulness and sincerity of that in your life that's going to make the difference. It's, it's one thing to say something or write it down on a piece of paper. It's a whole other thing for it to be seen to be reality in your life. And some of those teenagers that signed that paper out, you know, they, they just hit and skip and miss church. They're in need desire in their life to be here every service. That's, that's not living your life on purpose for God. And, and so, you know, so on purpose into your life, being faithful to the house of God. Being faithful. So into your life, reading the word of God. Prayer. Sow it into your life. Do it so into your life, giving to the work of God. Make that a part of what you do. Uh, so by giving so that you can reap back uh, the benefit of a thriving local church ministry for you, for your family, for your children, for your grandchildren. So on purpose. Uh, so seeking to reach the others. So training others to reach the lost. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 8, the Bible said, Love never faileth. Love never fails. It works. It will always work. And it's the first fruit that the Spirit of God produces. Christ-like love. And it will never fail. Humility, surrendering our self to the Holy Spirit and the love of God will overcome every adversary you face. In your relationships as husbands and wives, humility, selflessness, being filled with the Holy Spirit and love will overcome every adversary as well as in parenting your children, living your life. So today, the Holy Spirit has a very real very necessary place in our homes and families. If you do not know Him as your Savior today, if you've never been born again by the grace of God, you do not have the Holy Spirit. But if you have been, and you've settled that, you have Him. Now, let Him go to work. Let Him lead and guide you. Let Him help you understand God's Word for your life, the will of God for your life, the way of God. Let Him help you make wise choices. And then let Him produce what He alone can produce in your life and in your relationships and families. Those fruits, those wonderful, great, good things of God and Jesus Christ in your homes and families. As you surrender your life to Him, let Him have control of your life. We're going to bow our heads and close our eyes. In a moment, we're going to stand together and we're going to pray. And with heads bowed and eyes closed, there may be somebody in this service today, front to the back, and you would be honest enough today to say, Pastor... I've never received Jesus Christ as my Savior. I do not know that I've been born again. I've been many other things. I've been religious. I've sat on a pew. I've, I, I would associate myself with some type of denomination, but I can't ever say in my life I've truly repented of my sins toward God and received Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. I'm not sure I'm born again today. I want to settle that. I want to know that I'm born again I want to know I have the Holy Spirit in my heart and life. Maybe you're a teenager or maybe not. Maybe you're a college student. Maybe you're an adult. Maybe you're married or maybe you're not. Husband, wife, single, whatever the case may be. You know today in your heart, I, I don't know that I'm born again. I don't know that I'm born again. Would you be honest today enough with me just to slip your hand up and just say by that raised hand, Pastor, I don't know that I'm born again. I know that this is something I need to settle in my heart and life. I want to settle the most important thing in life, and that's knowing that I'm born again. Anyone, anywhere at all, front to the back, I, I don't know that I'm born again. If I died today, I do not know that I would go to heaven. I need to be born again. Anyone, anywhere at all. Our heads are bowed and eyes are closed. I wonder today how many of us realize how important the Holy Spirit is in our life. He wants to take the Word of God and give us understanding. He wants to guide us in the way that God has planned for us. Uh, some of you here today, some of you students that are high school students, have you, have you begun to seriously ask God to give you direction for your life? 
Have you asked Him whether He wants you to surrender your heart and life to be a pastor, preacher, missionary, or evangelist? Have you asked God about what He wants you to do in furthering your education? He may want you to go to a secular college and get a, a degree that you can use in the world to get a good job and become a faithful church member and be a scriptural tither and give to missions and, and serve God in your local church. Or He may want you to go to a Bible college where you can get further training about how to serve Him. Have you asked God? Do you know what God wants for your life? Because if you're saved and you have the Holy Spirit, He wants you to know. He'll show you if you'll ask Him. I wonder today, how many of you teenagers, any of you, how many of you maybe just want to slip out of your seat and come and pray and say, Lord, I want to know Your will for my life. I want to know, God, what it is You want me to do. Is anyone concerned enough or do you already, already know? If we ask you today, one by one, what God's will is for your life, do you have the answer? If not, I hope you'll begin to seek Him. Some of you young men need to be leaders. You need to step out and say, God, I want to know Your will for my life. I want to follow You. I want to be led of You. I want You to serve. I want to serve You. Show me, Father, what the will of God is for my life. Some of you today that are in our services, uh, maybe your parents already and you have a home, you're married, you're established, but you need, you need the Holy Spirit to be alive, active and producing uh, the things only He can do in your family. And you know the trials, you know the struggles, you know the, the, the uh, adversary, you know all the pull of the world and the pressure, uh, you know pride and what the flesh can do and undo. And maybe there's some parents here today, uh, maybe there's some moms and dads who just need to slip out of your seat and come and say, Lord, I need the Holy Spirit to lead and guide us. Uh, we need His work in our family. Uh, Lord, would you help the Holy Spirit to have control of my life and my family so that we might know uh, what God alone, the Holy Spirit, can produce. Love and joy and peace and gentleness and goodness and meekness and faith and temperance. There may be some folks here today, uh, that family, not everyone in that family knows Jesus Christ as their Savior. They're not born again. And God's will is that none should perish. God's will uh, is that all would come to repentance. And uh, why, don't, why don't you come and just begin to seek the Lord today on behalf of mom or dad, grandma or grandpa, uh, uncle or aunt, brother or sister. Lord, save them. God, use my consistent, faithful walk before you to be a difference maker in their life. Uh, Lord, I want to see these folks saved for the glory of God. Why don't we seek God today? Why don't we seek the Holy Spirit? Heavenly Father, we pray in Jesus' name now. You'll have your way in the invitation. God, we pray that you'll speak to hearts and we'll be responsive. Your Word, God, the Word of God demands our response. And so, Lord, may we respond to it. We pray and we ask today now, if someone is lost, that come, they'll come today and be saved, that, God, we all will acknowledge our need of the Holy Spirit, and, Lord, we'll seek God to see Him work and to give Him control of our hearts and lives and homes. So we pray and ask it in Jesus' name, and amen. Why don't we stand together? We're going to turn to hymn 282, hymn number 282 in our hymn book. If God's spoken to your heart, teenager, why don't you slip out of your seat and come. Uh, God's spoken to you, mom, dad, husband, wife, whatever the case may be. Let's, let's, let's respond to him as we sing on the first verse, M282. <clears throat> sing the last verse today. It's verse 5. Just
Amen. Well, it's been a good place to be today. We're thankful for a great camp and for uh, these boys and girls and young men and women who went and did such a great job and praying our hearts will just be open to see God continue to work. We want to pray for them, lift them up, and uh, God knows circumstances and situations in life, but He is able to meet needs, and uh, we just want to be faithful to pray. We want to seek and have and know the the, the work of the Holy Spirit in our families. We want to want to know He's there and working, and we need Him. And may God help us to do that in our hearts and lives, in our homes. Hope you'll be back tonight at six o'clock, and we'll have our services this evening. Drew's going to run some pictures now and again tonight, and you want to kind of see some of those pictures and get an idea of what camp was all about. And uh, so we had a great week, but we're thankful for God's goodness to us. And this week we've got. Uh, a lot of things going on. Thursday's a big day, the joy trip Thursday morning, as well as the ladies' Bible study on Thursday night, and uh, all these things as we uh, look right on down now through the month of June. Well, let's pray together, and let's be dismissed in our services here today, and we just want to thank God for his goodness to us. Uh, Brother Charlie Bold, just dismiss us in prayer, please.